It's called the big country or the or the big empty. And it's and it's continually declining. Young people leave, go to college, they don't come back. If you ever go out with Texas, boy, won't you stop by Abilene? Fifty, seventy-five, a hundred oil wells, and now there's one, two. The rest of them are gone. Even when I was a little kid, a, a huge farmer was 1,500 acres. Now a huge farm is 25,000 acres. And they're farming it with the same number of people. The towns are shrinking, they're getting older, and the income is going down. In a town uh, this size, the water sales is where your income predominantly comes from. The city of O'Brien has the same problem that a lot of these little cities around here have. Their population going down, they're short on funds, and they're short on people that have the capability of managing their system. They got into a crisis, and it, it was a combination of management and dwindling income. It was a mess. Um, to treat the drinking water, we use chlorine gas, very deadly. And uh, when we go to the mixing station, obviously chlorine has been allowed to, to run loose, has damaged the structure of the building as well as the pumps. As soon as you pulled up within a couple hundred feet, you could smell chlorine gas. The grass was all dead. There's no telling how long that had been going on. Chlorine is highly corrosive, so everything that we had inside there was rusted out. Things were just being ignored, and uh, they couldn't do anything. Basically, they didn't have any money. And, and ultimately, we find out we're in well over $100,000 in debt. The actual lake is Miller Creek Lake, 12 miles east of us. They have to mix our water with their water to pull their nitrates down to the level that they can legally sell it to their customers. It takes about 25% lake water, which is a very expensive end of it, uh, to be mixed with the groundwater to get you in the legal area of nitrate containment. When they got to the point where they couldn't pay us, they just started pumping straight well water, which obviously exceeded the nitrate levels by, by a lot. North Central Texas Municipal Water Authority cut us off, which nobody in town knew and they used that as a sole source of drinking water for their city for a period of about six months. It's probably because we're such an agriculture area. You use a lot of uh, fertilizer that has nitrogen in it and, and then it percolates its way down. Dangerous for babies, pregnant women, and people who have a compromised immune system because the nitrates tied to the hemoglobin in, in your blood so the oxygen can't, and it makes it hard to breathe. The superintendent of schools checks the nitrate level and it's 14, which is 40% above the limit. And so the school wound up going to bottled water and drinking out of cups. And, and now we're out of compliance with TCEQ in every way. And so we've got a $35,000 fine. It's a pretty big job, in, even in a small town like that, because you have to do water, you have to do sewer, you have to do repairs, you have to do billing. It is, it is not a job you can make a living at, solely doing this, if you're working for one little city like this. I think I made $550 a month. Well, and uh, we don't treat the water we're, the way we're supposed to. We could very well kill a lot of people in a very short period of time because you have E. coli, you have bacteria, you have viruses. What I had tried to do when I left was to get us to consolidate with Rochester down the road, a smaller city, who was in our situation. 
that we could have shared an operator. Each paid him enough where he could make a living on his own. There's a long history of competitive uh, uh, competitiveness between these little towns, and, and that makes it hard to get over, you know, when you're getting together. The issue there turned out to be just uh, grudges between cities. Knox City is not real anxious to take on our situation, as I said, but there was reason to do it. And so we approached them, our two councils meet together and ask them is there any possible way that we could get an agreement three miles apart that y'all could help manage our system. If you have 60 connections to the water, it takes just as much money to run for 60 as it would 300 nearly, same thing. They were going to be able to operate with the same administration, the same office workers, the same uh, operators that they had before. So we would be contributing twenty-something thousand dollars to their budget, basically. We sent out a letter to everybody, and we had a community meeting, which was quite confrontational because everybody's wanting to know how did we get here. But uh, by going to the community as a whole and explaining our situation, 90% of the people were going, well, that's what we got to do. Let's do it. And it's pretty hard. You may have $130 a bill for those city services a, a month. What would happen if we just threw our hands up in the air and said, come and get it? We don't want anything to do with it. They can make it tough for the city by just saying, okay, you got to meet the regulations of TCEQ and so forth, so we're going to get privatized. And that will not be as cheap for your citizens as it will be for you to manage your own system. If you have a, a city government, they are interested in uh, paying the bills. If you have a private company, they're interested in paying the bills and putting a little bit in their pocket. That in a situation like this, in a community like this, with so many older people, single family incomes, that would have been horrible. There are several thousand water systems in the state of Texas, and of those several thousand, the vast majority of them are very tiny, and, and they ha and have uh, the same inherent problems the city of O'Brien has. They have lack of people that are qualified and able and willing to run it in a safe manner. In the end, uh, their lawyer drew up an agreement for interlocal agreement. In other words, there's no real political connection. They were just doing a service for us for money. I think there's huge potential for that to be an answer to the problem. After we got our budget under control, we could pay them and, and make the repairs we had to have. And, and it worked so good.